Hello folks out there, this is the Tractor Doctor. I'm going to produce a series of videos uh, explaining how to do various things on uh, antique tractors. Start out the first video, we're going to go over the uh, updraft carburetor like it's used on most antique farm equipment. Uh, a lot of people are intimidated to work on these carburetors. But uh, they're actually very simple in design and function, and they're very simple to uh, fix. The one we're going to talk about is off of an uh, ADM Ford tractor, but they're all very similar to one another. This happens to be a Marble Schabler TSX241B. This is a little tag on it. Uh, this carburetor here is not in that bad of shape. It's a uh, replacement carburetor that's been put on at some time in the past. Um, but this particular one has set up for a long time and it's become gummed up on the inside. That's what happens to most of them. They gum up and get rusty. Um, gas gels in them, causes varnish to build up. Um, First thing we're going to go over is just the basic operations of it. And it's an updraft, and what we mean by that is the carburetor is mounted below the engine, and the air is drawn in through the throat of the carburetor from the air cleaner. It's drawn in through the air, drawn up through the throat of the carburetor, goes up through the venturi, comes up here, and this is the throttle blades that control the amount of air and fuel mixture that goes in it. Your governor rod will hook on right here. And this is your idle adjustment screw. Just as it for uh, idle speed. It's a little stop right here. It comes down against the stop and here's the screw. Screw the screw in and out. Here's your uh, choke right here. It's hooked to your choke rod. And this, this in here happens to be spring loaded so it will pull it back to the open position. This is where you choke it when you uh, first starting it up, and that helps it draw extra fuel in, riches up the fuel mixture. And here's your uh, idle adjustment screw. This is the adjustment for the air, for the idle mixture, and this is the needle that adjusts the fuel for the idle mixture. Here's your inlet fitting. And you got a little screen on the inlet fitting. The screen here is actually in very good shape. It's clean. A lot of folks neglect to pull this part out and clean this screen. A lot of times what I do if you're running an inline fuel filter and over time the screen gets damaged and torn up, you can take the screen out and throw it away as long as you're running an inline fuel filter. The original setup from the factory, you had a sediment bulb or sediment bowl on the bottom of the uh, gas tank and it had a little copper mesh filter in it also and this was a secondary filter but uh, I recommend to put an inline small inline filter in the line just makes it work better and the carburetor is not near as likely to get gummed up um, disassemble the carburetor you got four screws right here just regular flathead screws just use a standard flathead screwdriver. Take those four screws out and pull the carburetor apart like this. And I've all there's supposed to be a gasket on here. I've already disassembled this one to make the video go easier. Here's the venturi right here. And see how it's it's tapered in there? It's bigger on one end it is on the other and as the air pulls up through it it sets down in here and as the air pulls up through it it causes a negative pressure and draws fuel up this jet this is it goes down in there is the main jet and this is a little rod it goes down in there and it's hollow it draws fuel out of the bowl down in here up through here and it atomizes in the throat of the carburetor as it passes on up and that's it sucks the fuel mixture in through there. Right here is the float assembly. See that? It's just got a little rod that holds the float. A little pivot rod. Pull the little rod out. Take the float off. 
A lot of times you can shake them if the float gets a hole in it. You'll hear gas in there rattling around. You can also take a little cup or something that's got gas in it and let the float set the float down in it and if it sinks then your float's bad. But if this had any gas in it recently, if it's got gas in it when you disassemble it, the float's got a hole in it, you can shake it and most time you can hear the fuel rattling around inside the float. You can buy these float assemblies from anywhere that sells tractor parts. Uh, they're pretty common to get. This is your float. Here's your needle that adjusts your idle mixture. Go ahead and screw it out. Go ahead and screw it out. And then here's your, uh, your needle and seat assembly. Here, this is what controls the amount of fuel in the bowl. Put a little needle out. Well, that won't come out. This one here is froze up. It's corroding from setting. Just take your needle out. Screw your seat out. And a lot of times, they make a special tool for doing this with. But you can take something that's wide like this. Get in both sides of it. And you can unscrew these things without any trouble, but you have to be careful because they're made out of brass. And you'll damage the slot if you're not real careful. Let's go ahead and screw this out. And see how this one's rusty on the inside and all. A lot of times these things don't need nothing but just a good thorough cleaning. Take this out. Alright, screw this out. This is your inlet and your screen. Alright. And there's a little bitty jet right in here. See the little jet? That's your idle jet. You want well, you gotta have the right size screwdriver. You wanna be sure take that jet out. Screw this jet out and, and you want to be sure to clean all those little passages. And then this is your throttle shaft. You can go ahead and unscrew these screws. The particular kit that I have to rebuild this carburetor with comes with a new throttle shaft. It's got a new throttle shaft and a new main jet's throttle shaft. It's got a new needle and seat. It comes with the main jet also. This piece right here. It's a complete kit. Now you can get a partial kit that just comes with a needle in the seat and the gaskets. So you got all your jets, your main jet, your idle jet, and you also you got your needle in the seat. And then you got the rod that controls the idle fuel mixture. Oh. Got this half ready to put into your cleaning solution. Then you want to take the bottom half and this rod right here, you want to take the rod, the metering jet out of it. This one here is a 3 8 socket. I'm going to screw it out. See how this one gummed up. It's very corroded. If you're just going to be reusing this thing, you want to spray some carburetor cleaner up in here in each end and blow it out. You can take a torch tip cleaner and run through these little holes here. But in this particular case, we have a brand new one. Uh, you want to take this little plug right here in the bottom. It's a little quarter inch pipe thread plug. You want to go ahead and take it out. And then you got a plug here on the back side. Now some of these carburetors will have what's called an economizer screw in the bottom of it that you use to adjust your wide open fuel mixture with for the greatest economy, for the best economy. But this particular one here just got a plug in this hole, but you want to take it out. That way you can blow up through this passage with compressed air, but you want to clean all this out. 
where this thing's set and it's got corroded down in here and where the jets come up through there. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to one of these carburetors. But we've got everything disassembled. Here's the bottom half, the top half, and you got your float and your little venturi. Now this one, the venturi is made out of plastic. So you want to be careful with it, but the original carburetors, the older ones, are made with a brass venturi in them. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to the disassembly. And what I do is I get uh, one of those gallon cans, a carburetor cleaner, you can get it at any parts store. Um, several different brands of it. It's got a little basket in there with it. It's in a gallon can like a paint can. And you just set your carburetor down in it and let it soak overnight. And that'll usually clean it up. And then I use the spray carburetor cleaner that comes in the aerosol cans to do the final cleaning and then put the little straw that comes with it on it and all these little passages. Like right here, here, here. Down in here, you can blow all them little passages with the little straw and make sure and then run compressed air through it to make sure everything's clean. And then you're ready for reassembly. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and this is going to be part one. I'm going to go ahead and soak everything overnight and do part two on reassembly. So be sure to watch part two of this video for the reassembly.